Hi, and welcome to my reading vlog for Bloodmarked, the second book in the Legendborn duology by Tracy Dion. I'm Monica, if this is your first time watching one of my videos. I make bookish content here on YouTube, and if that sounds interesting to you, I hope you can stick around and see what I have to offer. Just to have a small intro into this video, Bloodmarked is a sequel to Legendborn, which is about 16 year old Brie Matthews who has recently enrolled into the early college program on the University of North Carolina campus and on her first night there she witnesses a magical flying demon attack and she quickly finds out that there is a secret society on campus named the Legendborn that is comprised of students who actually fight off these demons and they have magical powers. And Brie herself, she's still grappling with the grief of her mother who has recently passed away and she also discovers that her mother might have connection to the Legendborn and she wants to find out more. So Brie decides to join the secret society and she also has the help of the Legendborn Nick. So Brie now in book one, a lot has happened and through the events of that, for book two, what I want is to see Brie grow more into her powers, try to understand her new place in this world, as well as more development in her relationships with her friends as well as her love interests. And I also want to mention that I did upload a reading vlog for Legendborn that has some mini spoilers, but it's mainly spoiler free. And if you're interested in that, I will link that in the eye above and in the description box below. And I will also be uploading a full review of both books, Legendborn and Bloodmarked, with more of my in-depth thoughts about the characters, the plot, the magic, the romance that will be coming out. And I'll also link that up everywhere, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Anyways, this vlog will have full spoilers for Bloodmarked, so be warned if you do not want to be spoiled for Bloodmarked. And I'm just going to jump right into the vlog portion of this video. So right off the bat with Bloodmarked, we are taking place a month later of the events of Legendborn. And things are a lot different now. So far, there's no sign of Nick yet. Everyone is on high alert at the lodge, especially Sal, who has now taken upon himself to become Bree's own personal bodyguard. Bree is still trying to get a grasp of her powers, but she's slowly but surely learning about her abilities. And I also really love William, the healer. He, I think he's just a really good type of person to have around and on your side. And we also get our first appearance of the regents of the order. And I think in book two, we will just dive a lot more deeper into like who the regents are and how that part of the order is structured. And I really want Brie to gain respect to her name as now their king. And of course, I do hope for more development on the relationship side and having Brie become more comfortable in her new found role, in her new abilities. So far in Bloodmarked, I am 30% the way through and a lot has gone down in these last couple of like 10-ish chapters. So we have some new characters and we also have a whole slew of a lot of sketchy things going on with the Order and especially with the Regents. Right before the funeral, we have the appearance of Erebus who is a mage sessional. With Erebus, he comes off as a little bit creepy because at some point when he learns about Breeze unique powers with the root craft and blood craft and being a medium and with Arthur's line. He takes a really scientific interest in her. These regions are really sketchy and I really think at some point they are manipulating Brie for their own agenda, of course, and they also want to experiment on Brie, which is not good. But with the arrival of the Mage Guard, we do have an introduction to Lark, who is a Scottish Merlin and he comes off as really likable and witty, and he's being appointed to be Bree's new king's mage, giving a lot of tension between Cell and Bree because they never really spoke about their conversation again since the end of Legendborn, like that last scene with them together. There's a lot of tension between those two, and every time they speak, it becomes an argument, 
and I hopefully they can get a real conversation in soon. But with the regents, there's so much protocol and unspoken rules. Like, I don't know how Brie is keeping up with all of it. And at the funeral, of course, we find out that the regents actually did frame Cell as a traitor and like that it's not a surprise. There's a larger picture that Brie doesn't know and we also don't know as readers. And also Brie, like girl, you need to stop the self-doubt but I think we're still at the early stages of this book where we will see her overcome that. During the rite where Brie swears him to be the king in title, Brie's alone at this point, like Nick has been kidnapped by his father and Cell has been arrested by the regents. So she's all alone but I really think Brie handles herself quite well here and it's really cool to see her visions, especially to see how Arthur is and how her ancestor Vera is. And we also did get a little appearance of Nick and Brie being together through the vision of Brie that she has of the round table. I don't know how their relationship can continue but I do hope it can and that there is a solution there. But we also do have like our love triangle going on between Brie, Cell, and Nick still so things could change at a moment's notice in this book. Oh, I also need to mention that I love how Brie used her experience with grief and healing through her grief to help her friend Felicity at the funeral who is going through her own grief. And I really love how Brie recognized that Felicity just needed a friend and not really a king at that moment. Anyways, I'll see you in the next clip. Right now, I am on chapter 39, 70% of the way through this book. A lot has gone down and here are my thoughts. I'm not sure if the series will have a third book but so far in book two there is a lot set up for a third book because I don't know how everything is going to be resolved and I think there's like 200 pages left in this book. There's still so much that needs to get resolved. So right after Brie got kidnapped, um, it turns out that Erebus and the regents really really don't care for her and they just really want to do anything that will benefit them. I also really love the whole rescue and how everyone got reunited. It felt really much like a spy movie that went down with that action sequence. And now Brie and her friends are on the run away from the Order as well as demons. And right at this point in the book, the bottom line is that Brie cannot trust anyone at this point. Not the regions, not the people who are around her, like she can't trust anyone, it's kind of hard for her. And Brie, she can't seem to catch a break because she's getting attacked at every corner, at every turn by demons, the order, and also by random strangers. I think she really deserves a really long vacation if she survives this, and I hope she does, and I think she will. But when we're at the safe house on the farm, and Brie is grabbing some pasta from the pantry when that demon just grabbed her out of nowhere. I was like, I was thinking like Brie, she just needs some freaking pasta. <laughs> just let this girl eat and rest, but she can't have a break because people want to kill her. I'm also loving like the late night girl talks that are between Brie and Alice because they're just like rehashing the events and unwinding from whatever crazy things that has happened that day and also having some boy talk. And we have a whole road trip in a demon bar. So with that sequence, we get to see how Cell and Brie continue to fight and have tense arguments with each other. And they're also having like some flirtatious moments. Other people are starting to notice that, oh, like you have some chemistry with Cell. Like what's going on there? But then Cell is actually more demon than Brie thought. Cell, he actually did hide it from Brie on purpose, like he mesmered her and I was like, whoa dude, okay. I wasn't so shocked by it but Cell does tend to care quite deeply about what Brie thinks about him and I think that's in part of why he mesmered her and didn't mesmer anyone else. And I also noticed that there's a lot of oath talk in this book about how deep the oath bond runs between the two people in it and it's mainly Cell that is highlighting that in this book. He's highlighting how complex it can be and how deep it runs, like your soul is bonded to someone else like his is to Nick and how feelings can be shared through that bond. And we also saw how a oath 
is broken and what happens to the person like they die like with Jonas earlier I do think there's like definite foreshadowing something to do with the oaths and I did end right where uh, Cell and Brie are on the way to rescue Nick and this book has continued to take over my life and I really can't wait to see where we go next. Hi everyone and welcome to my last check-in and I just finished Bloodmarked. So first Nick takes revenge for himself and when he chose to leave Cell and Brie I was so sad in that moment for all of them and Cell also sacrifices himself quite a lot in this book. He did it once when he was trying to save Brie from dying from that demon attack and then he does it again when he sacrificed his humanity to bring Brie back and he essentially turns full demon and at the end of the book I don't know what's gonna happen next. I think my heart is just getting continuously broken for all these characters. Brie also makes a choice to make a sacrifice on her own terms and now she doesn't want to have anyone tell her what to do, especially her ancestors. And I really give props to Brie for deciding like, okay, I just want to make my own choices now and not have Arthur or Vera take control of me, especially with Arthur. And with all the twists that happened in this book, my brain was just hurting but in a good way because I was so shocked at some of the twists and turns. And also I really loved at the volition where Brie is undergoing some training, some more training, and she has that vision with Cell and Nick. And Cell and Nick are speaking in Welsh and she's just standing there confused and yes I did google translate what they were saying and it's really sweet of them because both of them really care for Brie so much and I have to talk about that birthday scene and Cell and Brie finally have that conversation from the end of book one about the Cariad and what he meant about that. They also talk about their feelings and they finally kiss and it was such a good scene. <laughs> I loved it. Another factor right after her birthday celebration, there's the whole thing with Arthur possessing her and how Erebus is actually the demon king who uh, Bree's ancestor made the bargain with to save her family line. So with that huge twist, I was so shocked. I didn't know what to expect. We have another sacrifice at the end of the book with Bree making the choice to go with Erebus in exchange that she could learn more about her powers and to also have Sal go to his mother to potentially save his humanity or bring back his humanity. And with that, and the book ends and there's obviously going to be a book three, which I'm so excited about. Now I'm going to be sharing my concluding thoughts. All right, so Bloodmarked is a book that definitely packs a punch. It will mess up with your emotions with all the characters that we learned to care from book one. Brie learns more independence and to make her own choices. Nick takes a darker turn and he still holds on to his morals and goals. While Cell is becoming more open and vulnerable, but he's still an asshole. In this one, there's a lot more in-depth exploration about Brie's powers and how she's trying to learn to control them still. And I did make note of this that Brie also seems to be quite empathic that she's able to pick up on people's emotions around her and she's also able to do what is appropriate for that situation. And the romance department in this book is great. There's a lot of development with Cell and Brie, but we also get a lot more sacrifices being made in book two and it's heartbreaking. I especially love the twists and turns in this book with Arthur and the demons and their connections to Brie. I also love the family friend bonding time, especially on that road trip. Demon bar, it was a lot of fun to read that little section. Also in general, there's a whole lot of setup for book three, but we also do get a lot of development just in general with all the characters, the plot, and the magic in this world, and discovering more about the history of Bree's ancestral line and also with and also with the order itself. I rated Bloodmark 5 out of 5 and I just need the next book now and I hope it will come out next year because I know there was a two-year gap between book one and two but let's hope it releases soon. And that's everything that I have to say about Bloodmark. I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog and I want to say thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below to see more of my future videos and also ring the bell to be notified. 
I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.